Hey, what's going on guys? Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. And today guys, what I have for you is my top 10 wide receivers for the 2015 NFL season. Guys, this is about two weeks before the season starts. So we've still got a little bit to work on here. There could be some injuries, could be some shifting up and down just a little bit. But hopefully we've gotten through the majority of those problems. Kelvin Benjamin, Jordy Nelson obviously went out already. So there's been some shift already this year. Sucks, but we've got to work with what we have. So we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about our top 10 wide receivers today. So what I have for you at number 10, we have Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is a guy who was a rookie last year, broke out in a big way, had a big, big season. Tons of touchdowns, tons of receptions, tons of yardage. And this guy was the number two wide receiver heading into the year last year on a team that really, frankly, wasn't very good. They didn't have great quarterback play. This year, they do have a rookie quarterback with Jameis Winston taken number one overall in the in the previous draft this uh, this April, and he is looking very good so far. Um, it, you know, obviously, we are going to expect to see some downfall at some point this season. He's going to have some bad games. He's probably also going to have some good games. The thing that I really like about Jameis Winston, from what I've seen on tape of him, and and. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not a college football analyst or anything like that, but you look at the way that these guys throw the ball and just the willingness that he has to throw it up and give his receivers a chance. I really do like that about Jameis Winston, and I think that it's going to play right into what makes Mike Evans a great player. This guy's a physically dominant force. He's got huge arms. He's six foot five. I mean, he's just a freaking beast. He's quick. Everything that you would look for in a wide receiver. I mean, we're talking about a guy who could be a top 10 wide receiver for the next five, six years down the road. This guy is an absolute beast, and I definitely think he's worthy of being in the top 10. Now, the only thing that we're concerned about right now is that he is dealing with a little bit of an injury, but I, it does sound to me like he's going to be ready to go for week one, so I'm not overly concerned about it. I've drafted him in a couple of drafts, and I'm not really too concerned about what's going on there but it is important to, that we pay attention make sure he's going to be ready to go in week one and if you're really debating between him and another guy on this list I think that you may want to go with the other guy on the list because I think the other guys that are above him might be a little bit safer Mike Evans does have a great upside though tons of touchdown potential and uh, if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a bad team this year and they have to pass a lot that could mean quite a bit of production for Mike Evans and even for Vincent Jackson as well down there in Tampa Bay so moving on, we're going to T.Y. Hilton at number nine. This guy is going to be the number one target for Andrew Luck this year. It's kind of interesting. A lot of times teams are, are really, they're not willing to give guys a big contract. And they went out of their way a year early to give T.Y. Hilton a big deal. And I think that that's something that I'm really interested in for the Indianapolis Colts. It shows, first of all, that they're confident in him being a good player, but also it shows that they're willing to throw the football. I mean, they're not going to go out there and give this guy a big deal unless they're really confident that they can throw the ball deep to him on a regular basis and that they're confident that he can really develop into that number one wide receiver that we all know that he can be. And he was last year. He was a big-time playmaker last year as well. So I love T.Y. Hilton this year. I think that he's going to be a great value for where he's currently going in the draft. Um, there are rumors and, and different things like that that are kind of moving him even up the draft where you know we're not hearing so much about Andre Johnson being a big deal and other players in the offense being injured with Dwayne Allen and um, and that kind of thing. You're starting to see that T.Y. Hilton's actually moving up some draft boards. So if he does go where his his ADP was, which is around the third round, I think that he's a great value there. Um, End of the second round, even, I think you could consider going with T.Y. Hilton, but I don't want to see him up there with, like, your top five wide receivers. I don't think he's quite at that point yet, despite the fact that Andrew Luck loves him, and he's probably going to be the biggest player in that offense uh, as far as Andrew Luck's targets. So, um, again, T.Y. Hilton, great value if you get him in the late second, third round, something like that, but don't overreach on the guy because we're not still 100% sure that he's going to be a huge touchdown guy. Moving on to number eight, we have Odell Beckham Jr., and this guy was an absolute freaking monster as a rookie, guys. I mean, the second best rookie season by a wide receiver of all time. Only next to Randy Moss was this guy beaten, and he did it in 12 games. Odell Beckham Jr. is, it, it, I mean, physically we're talking about a, a potentially a once-in-a-generation type player. Now, the question is, is this guy going to stay healthy, first of all? And secondly... 
are there going to be other options in this passing game that are going to be able to help him get open? Because we kind of saw last year that once defenses started to kind of focus on him, there were times in games where he, I mean, I don't want to say that he disappeared because that didn't really happen, but I mean, he can be taken away. He's not the physically dominant force of a Mike Evans or a Calvin Johnson or one of those type of guys who's, you know, six foot five and 230 pounds. So he doesn't quite have the ability to go up and just physically push guys out of the way and get the ball. He has to run great routes and he has to make guys miss and he and frankly he's probably going to have to make catches like he did against you know against the Cowboys when he made that amazing grab it's very, very difficult for me to foresee him doing what he did in 12 games last year over a 16-game span. If he does, he's pretty much the number one wide receiver in fantasy football. But if he, even if he takes a slight step back, he's still going to be a very, very good fantasy player. You're talking about a guy who could potentially be the number one overall pick in dynasty leagues right now as well. So that's definitely something to think about if you're in one of those formats as well. Moving on to number seven, we have Randall Cobb of the Green Bay Packers. Now, Randall Cobb... Definitely the biggest beneficiary of the uh, of the Jordy Nelson injury. Well, I guess I shouldn't even say that. He's not necessarily the biggest beneficiary, but he's going to move up to the highest spot. I think Devontae Adams might be benef benefit a little bit more with Jordy Nelson out. But uh, J Randall Cobb is going to do a great job this year. I mean, we were already talking about him as a borderline top 10 wide receiver to begin with. And now we're talking about him being the number one wide receiver in the Green Bay offense. Green Bay is going to put up a ton of points this year. I mean, they could potentially be the number one scoring offense this year. So anytime you can get the number one wide receiver in the highest scoring offense in the league or, or a top three scoring offense, I would say at worst, you're talking about a very, very productive fantasy player. Now, Randall Cobb's not much of a touchdown scorer. We've kind of seen him fluctuate with that a little bit. But at the same time, though, this guy is going to make a ton of receptions for a ton of yards, and he's going to be extremely consistent. He's going to do fine with touchdowns. I don't think I see him getting to, like, the 16 like Des Bryant got, but we're talking maybe 8 to 10 touchdowns on the year with nearly 100 catches and a ton of yards to go along with it. So I'm very, very confident that Randall Cobb is going to be a great fantasy asset this year. Moving on to number 6, we've got A.J. Green of the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, A.J. Green is a guy who, again, physically dominant force. Six foot four. I mean, this guy is a big player, a big time playmaker as well. And a lot of people are forgetting about him. For some reason, he's going behind the Odell Beckhams sometimes, behind the T.Y. Hiltons. I've seen him go behind and I don't see it. I'm seeing A.J. Green as still being a very, very big fantasy player this season. I mean, we're talking about potential double-digit touchdowns again and tons of receptions and just like Randall Cobb, tons of yards. So I love A.J. Green. He was injured last year. People don't... They just, for whatever reason, forget about that. Now, I understand the Bengals have a great running game. They've got two very good running backs, arguably the best one-two punch in all of football, but they're still going to pass the ball. And the fact that they're so effective running the ball means that they can potentially put the ball up deep for A.J. Green more often. And A.J. Green's the kind of guy, again, that can put up double-digit touchdowns, which is something that is very rare in fantasy football, especially at the wide receiver position. You've got to go out there and acquire those type of guys. I, again, I think a lot of people are sleeping on A.J. Green for whatever reason. He's still, you know, being considered a wide receiver one in most formats. But still, I, I don't believe that you should be drafting guys like Odell Beckham Jr. ahead of A.J. Green right now. A.J. Green's been doing it for many, many years, and he's been doing it at a very consistent level. So I'm, I'm a big fan of A.J. Green, and I would definitely take him as the number six wide receiver in fantasy football this year. And number five, I have my personal favorite player in the NFL right now. That is, of course... Megatron, Calvin Johnson, the beast, man. This guy is unbelievable. The only problems that you have with Calvin Johnson right now, in my personal opinion, are the fact that the Lions look like they might run the ball a little bit more this year. They've got Amir Abdullah and they have Joyke Bell now, and both those guys look like they've got some talent. And the other problem, of course, which has kind of haunted Calvin Johnson owners for his entire career, frankly, is the fact that this guy just cannot stay fully healthy. It's, it's kind of surprising. You would think that some of these smaller receivers might suffer from a little bit more injuries than a big guy like Calvin Johnson, but it just hasn't been that way. The thing is, is that Calvin Johnson, when he's on the field, there might not be a better wide receiver ever. I mean, Jerry Rice, obviously, the production was there, and, and he was unbelievable, but Jerry Rice was playing with Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Matt Stafford's a good quarterback, don't get me wrong, 
but Calvin Johnson puts up unbelievable numbers. I mean, he's put up the biggest wide receiver year ever in terms of yardage before. He's had 16 touchdown seasons. I mean, this guy it has done it all, and there's no reason to believe that he is suddenly not going to do it all again. As long as he stays healthy, Calvin Johnson almost certainly will be a top five fantasy wide receiver. The, again, the only real concern here is if he's going to play all 16 games. If we had a verification that he was, I could see him going number one at wide receiver, and I wouldn't have any problem with that. But as things are right now, the injury concerns are certainly there. The running game, again, in Detroit should be a little bit better, and they should lean on that just a little bit more. So I think Calvin Johnson's upside might just not be quite as much as it has been in years past. But still, the dude could, he has the upside of being the number one fantasy wide receiver, frankly, if he, if he plays all 16 games, like I said. So uh, again, no problem with taking Calvin Johnson as your number one wide receiver. I've got him at number five. And again, he's my favorite player in the league, so I've got a little bias for him. But, you know, what are you going to do? Number four overall, I have Julio Jones of the Atlanta Falcons. Julio Jones, again, this guy is a target freaking monster, man. This guy gets targeted a ton. A lot of people want to talk about guys like Roddy White being in the offense, and then they want to talk about Leonard Hankerson, who's even a potential up-and-comer this year, potential sleeper. Put that one in your back of your mind when you're in your deep leagues and at the end of the draft. But Julio Jones is who this offense goes through. I mean, they made the move in the draft years ago, the crazy move at the time to give up multiple first round picks to move up for a wide receiver and frankly it's worked out for him. Julio Jones again just like Calvin Johnson when he's been healthy he has been unbelievable. I mean crazy crazy numbers across the board. He does it all with touchdowns, receptions, yardage and realistically this guy could lead the league in catches this year very easily. The Atlanta Falcons I mean, we've already seen it in the preseason they are targeting him like crazy and I, I don't see any reason to believe that won't happen this year during the regular season as well. Atlanta's running game still is not great. They've got Devontae Freeman, and uh, you know they've made other moves to get other guys. But at the same time, you just look at their passing game, and you have to think that's where their offense is going, and Julio Jones is going to be the number one guy for this Atlanta offense. I don't think there's any question about it. He's going to put up a big year as long as he's healthy. So that's why he is my number four wide receiver. At number three, I've got Demarius Thomas. Oh my gosh, I, it's just like stud after stud after stud at this point at the wide receiver position. All of these guys in the top five, six, seven even receivers I think could be the number one wide receiver in fantasy this year. Uh, but at number three again, I've got Demarius Thomas. He does have Peyton Manning throwing him the ball, which is always nice. They did lose Wes Welker in the offseason there in Denver. They still have Emmanuel Sanders and Cody Latimer is looking a little bit better, but I think the big thing here is that Demarius Thomas is still the guy who this offense goes through. Oh, also, they did also lose Julius Thomas. So again, you look at this Denver offense, and I mean, the guy who has the most chemistry with Peyton Manning is unquestionably Demarius Thomas. He's been in a top five fantasy wide receiver for quite a few years now. Uh, pretty much every year under Peyton Manning, Demarius Thomas is pushed as being the number one overall uh, fantasy wide receiver. So I don't have any problem taking him first among wide receivers. Again, just like I don't with most of these top five or six guys, but Again, Demarius Thomas is in a situation where it's a little bit potentially more run-heavy than it has been in the past. Gary Kubiak is the new head coach there in Denver, and we're, we are expecting them to run the ball a little bit more than they have over the past couple of years, especially with Peyton Manning's health being a little bit of a concern. Still, Demarius Thomas has 100 catch potential, 15 or more touchdown potential, I mean 1,500 yard potential. Those numbers are not easy to come by. There are very few guys in the NFL who have that even as an upside. This guy has that as like a realistic projection. So again, Demarius Thomas, unbelievable talent, number three overall wide receiver, amazing, amazing player. Go out there and get him if you can right now because uh, I think at the end of the first round, beginning of the second round, it's great value for a guy like Demarius Thomas who's going to put up very good numbers and really has no concern. I have no concern about him being a top five wide receiver. I don't really see any for situation other than if Peyton Manning or he gets injured that he is not a top five wide receiver. So it's tough to come by that type of consistency in the NFL. Number two, Des Bryant, Dallas Cowboys. I'm a Cowboys fan. Again, a little bit of bias here, but I think Des Bryant has, again, the potential to put up 15 or more touchdowns, which is just something you cannot come across very often. He did lead the NFL in touchdowns this past season. 
amazing, amazing skills out of Des Bryant. There just aren't many guys that can go up and get the ball the way that this guy does. And when they're in the red zone, the Cowboys like to run the ball, but their favorite play is just to throw that back shoulder fade to uh, to Des Bryant, and it is almost unstoppable. Romo puts it right on the money to him, and Des just abuses the guy that's up against him, frankly. He runs right up on him, steps back, turns around, catches the pass, and it's just it's money. It's money. As a Cowboys fan, you just love to watch it. I'm a big fan of Des Bryant, obviously. This guy has been very healthy as well throughout the majority of his career, so there hasn't been much of a concern as far as that goes. The Cowboys offense should be even more pass-happy this year, despite the fact that I still think they're going to run plenty and do a decent job running the football. With the fact that they don't have DeMarco Murray and they're leaning on Joseph Randall and DeMar and uh, uh, what the hell is his name? Darren McFadden. There you go. Uh, the fact that they're leaning on those two as your running backs, I think you're going to see them pass the ball a little bit more than they had uh, even there, especially this past season, but even over the past couple of seasons. So I'm definitely expecting Des Bryant, again, just like Demarius Thomas, to put up big, big numbers. I think the, the floor on these guys is very, very high, which is nice. Um, you don't really have much of a concern that they're not going to have a great season. And all of them, again, could be the number one wide receiver overall. So that's why I'm, I love Des Bryant as my number two guy. And at number one this year, guys, we've got Antonio Brown. Oh my gosh. Antonio Brown kind of like breaks the mold of what you expect. Uh, pretty much all the rest of these guys in like what the top six or so are all physical specimens. They're all six foot three, six foot four, six foot five or above. Um, and Antonio Brown is not that. Antonio Brown is a guy who most people when he was coming into the NFL thought was very, very raw, maybe was never going to develop into a full-time like wide receiver type player, maybe just a kick returner even, uh, or a guy that could go out there for some trick plays and make big plays here and there. But Antonio Brown has developed into arguably the best route runner in the NFL right now. The guy knows how to get open against any defense. He's not, again, big in physical stature, but he just is a, he's an extremely smart player. He's extremely explosive as well, and these past couple of seasons he's done a great job getting into the end zone which is something that we did not see from him early in his career so Antonio Brown is putting it together at this point man I mean we're talking about 120 plus catches this past year and I don't see any reason to believe that he will not be over 100 catches again this year he's going as far as as high as the number one overall pick in PPR leagues and quite frankly I don't have any problem with that I think you have question marks with all of the top five or six or pretty much any running back in the NFL this year I think you have question marks with so the fact that there are really no question marks with Antonio Brown makes him arguably the safest possible number one overall pick that you can take in fantasy football this year and to me that is just extremely extremely valuable I don't have any problem taking him number one overall I might not personally do it but I again I believe that Antonio Brown has that type of upside and again with the high floor that he presents there's pretty much no possibility that he will not be a top or at the top five almost guaranteed, but top 10 other than injury, I can almost tell you 100% for certain Antonio Brown will be up there. He's going to be targeted probably as much or more than any receiver in the NFL this year, and that's going to make him extremely valuable. So there you have it, guys. That is my top 10 wide receiver list for the 2015 NFL season. I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments section below. Do you agree with me? Is there anybody that I missed? Should somebody be higher than somebody else on the list? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be bringing you the tight ends list here in the next day or so so be on the lookout for that as well and i'm also going to be putting up my full list of top uh, 200 or so players so be on the lookout for that as well thank you guys so much again for all the support be sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new and i'll talk to you guys again soon